All right, folks, we're here with um, Pete Ardema and Kevin Brown. And um, last week, about two, three weeks ago, Pete, I posted a really informal video on Kevin, I mean, uh, Cal Ross uh, Roadster with one of your first Mosier motors in it. Right. And it, it sparked a lot of curiosity. So I have tons of comments and folks are really wanting to know a little bit more about the internals of the motor and how you designed it. So can okay, you tell us well, what you got here? Because I've done a lot of, Kevin and I have done a lot of overhead cams over the years. Uh, conversion Chevys and Fords. The Mosier family called me about seven, eight years ago, and Harvey Crane, which was helping Richard Mosier build this engine back in the 70s, mm -hmm. uh, called me. They called me and they wanted to sell all this leftover Mosier stuff. So I flew to Florida and looked at it, and uh, we made a deal on buying seven pallets of almost all of it's junk. We've got about a dozen heads, probably 50 camshafts, and a bunch of miscellaneous parts, but not nearly enough to build one engine. And then when I came home from, from uh, Florida and told Kevin I bought it, he told me, you know, those camshafts turn backwards. The way Richard Mosier did it, he, he put one of these gears on each camshaft, and then he put this third gear that drove it. And then he had a belt drive from the crankshaft. This went on the crank. And then these just, there was one of these on each head that turned these gears. Well, when you have a gear drive, you're gonna reverse the rotation. Okay, yeah, that's right. So all these cams we had, about 50 of them, were made to turn or reverse rotation. And cams are expensive for, for us to make. They cost us about $1,000 to make. You gotta machine them and heat treat them and grind them and all that stuff. So Kevin came up with the idea that we would put the marine gear drive on the push rod cam. So this engine now has a marine. They made them for Chris Crafts and boats. When they turn the engines backwards, they okay. want two engines. So this has got a gear drive behind this sprocket. So the push rod cam now turns backwards because it's a gear drive from here to here. Okay, yeah. So now all five camshafts turn reverse rotation. And so we were able to use the, use the cams that we got. We didn't use the gears that he provided. They were noisy and really hard to get lined up. You can imagine trying to get this, this, the two gears lined up perfect without shimming. I heard they were real noisy engines yeah, because those gears were straight cut. So we built our first one just to see if we could do it. And that's the one that we featured. That's the one in Cal's car. In Cal's car. And I, yeah. it was sitting around here. Cal didn't have an engine, so I said, "Here, you can play with this thing for a while, see how it works." And he's probably got maybe ten thousand miles on it in yeah. the last three years. So then we, we are going to do another one, and that's this one. We're just doing this for kind of fun. I'm trying to get Hot Rod Magazine to do a comparison between this engine, a 50-year-old engine, and a new LS with the same specs, compression, oh, yeah. um, timing, carburetor, whatever. Now, now, this behind us, Pete, right, that's the original magazine this cover? Is the, this is the, the magazine article that came out 50 years ago. Almost and that was, years. yeah, August of 1971. Now, in the previous video, I posted a lot of people have referenced this magazine. They remember seeing right. it when they were younger, some people still have it. Um, even a gentleman in um, Australia, Steve Venice, right. made a comment the other day that his, his father, he's a third generation automotive engineer, and his father told him about this motor and he has been very interested in finding information about it and he stumbled across the video we posted a couple right. weeks ago. So, so there are people, it seems like people still remember that article and well, remember it being a one-time feature, but here we have the living history right yeah. here in your shop. Four valves in the U.S. are very uncommon. Nobody, Offenhauser, of course, and this one, and a few others. The Corvette of the 19, or 2020? Yeah. 2000, 2000, zero, zero. Uh, that was another four valve, but it didn't go over that well. They came out with the one that we're using yeah. on. Oh yeah, yeah that's one of the Lotus. It was actually Lotus heads though, right? right. Mercury so, yeah. Marine built it and Chevrolet yeah. sold it in their car. They sold it for, the car doubled in price when they put that 
four valve in it. So what are some of the things that you guys have? So I know you had some of the camshafts, you had a couple of the cylinder head castings, correct? We had. But what are we, some of the components that you had? We had made? head castings. And that was it. You need. So they're similar. You need these. four four of these cam boxes to make the engine work, and I think we got three. Okay. So we didn't even have enough to. And they were all, I think, just intakes. They were yeah, even, they were all the same side yeah, intake. So we machined these on the CNC, the four. They're all slightly different, right? These are a little longer than this side, the left side, or the right side being longer because the offset on the cylinder. So this is what you machined. Yeah, we machined this box. Now, are these camshafts original? They're the original. Crane cams? Yeah. That, okay. We put an end on them to put this Gilmer sprocket on it. We buy this material in lengths of one foot long, this sprocket material. And then you slice and them? And we just slice them. Make, make, we made five of them on this engine. We extended the pushrod cam through the front cover, the oil seal there, and then we adapt, We run the bolts through the whole mess, these bolts. And I know on the previous motor, which is in cows, there's a little bit different idler, idler pulley setup yeah, we're and it trying goes to, through the water pump. Every time you do one, you try and clean it up a little bit. Yeah, we had a, someone had made a mention also the other day, I can't remember, um, it was a Keith Studley about a, uh, a vintage sprint car in, in Paris, California. I, I understand there's about four or five of these running. Um, McMillan had one, the owner of Street Rider Magazine in a 32, and this tamale wagon that's in Paris. Northern, Northern California. Okay. And then there was one that ran, tried to run at Indy. They didn't make it at Indy in, I guess that would have been 72 or three. Uh, Richard died about five years ago, Richard Mosier. Uh, do you, the instigator in the whole thing. Do you know why this engine was inspired? Why did Mosier and Crane develop it? Were they trying well, to make it an Indy motor or was it just to see? I believe the kit, which would be two heads and the camshaft, was about ten thousand dollars in nineteen seventy. Okay. Which would buy a half a dozen cars. Yeah. Um, but what was the reason for them building this? Was it just to you know, see what they could do, or were they truly trying to make a competitive? Motor I think they or? were trying to build an engine for Sprint and Indy that would be competitive. Unfortunately, time ran out. I, they need a little help too. Um, it probably would have done well had, had they been able to keep it running. They did not qualify at Indy, so it's still short of horsepower over the Offenhauser. Okay. Uh, it was a naturally aspirated engine. I don't know what. Indy had natural versus turbos. I think they were either one or the other. I don't think they ran both at the same time. So is, the, is there significant horsepower gain on this setup or? Well, that's one of the reasons we want to do this one, to compare it. We know what the compression ratio is, the displacement. We can compare it to a push rod, two valve push rod. Mm. We know that in our race car is far superior. We're setting records almost every time we go out, only because we got, not only, but that's one of the reasons, is that we only mess with four valves. Yeah. So you would expect this to have a significant gain. I think this should be close to 400 horsepower, low compression, or not low, low, but not 13 or 14 to one. Yeah. This is probably a 10 to one engine, uh, 350 cubic inches, mm -hmm. and 400 for that type of engine. If it idles and starts and runs nice, it's pretty good. And will this be able to increase the revs, RPMs with the yeah, setup? Oh yeah, a lot more than a push rod, right? Obviously, right, sure. they'd be able to bring this up a little more. We turned our other into 9800, no problem, which is almost identical. Okay. Than the, so these, so these could potentially run in the 9000 RPM range. I think one? they could, yeah. Wow, that's pretty. Riding good crank rods and pistons. Everything balanced. So, so Kevin, what um, what were some of the challenges with this? putting this together and designing it and so on have you well I mean we changed several things but the um, the valves at the day were all 11 30 seconds and we put seven millimeter in this um, we had to I basically had to take the stock part there and then kind of recreate that three-dimensionally to make a you know to make make this part you know trying to make it as light as possible so you know having to scallop it all out and try to get the weight down. 
We hit this one, the valve seats are not in it, obviously. It, now, is this yeah. an original? This is a Mosher. Yeah, this right? is all they, all their machining. This is we all their machining. We haven't touched it. So this is old. And this one's unported. The original, the first one, the one that's in Cal's car was already all, all ported. Um, this one here, I think we we ported ourselves. So we'll see see what the difference is. <laughs> now that you explain the motor, what's the purpose of this particular one is this for a customer or are you doing this for um yourself is going to go on a roadster or what, what's the what's going to happen to the motor well, once it's we done? we had we had most of the pieces and we knew how to build them. we built the first one for cal so we knew how to do it this one i thought we might do a comparison with a ls or no, another chevy uh, that's why the manifold is not built yet we haven't built any but our idea would be to build fuel injection or carburetor manifold and take it to a dyno. JBA is our local guy here. Oh, well, Bruce down at JBA? Right. Yeah, okay. On their dyno. They've got an engine dyno. And see what it makes. Uh, hopefully it would do well. We know what it is, and we know what a two-valve pushrod would do with the same parts. Same okay. carburetor, same compression. compression ratio. Same cams. These are fairly mild cams. So you're going to see if the proof is in the pudding, yeah. basically. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure it is. It's just we don't know. We don't know the numbers. No. Yeah. And we had the pieces, we might as well put it together. Uh, Larry gave me the block, a friend of mine gave me the block. And that's Larry Ho Hofer at the Corvette shop, right? Yeah. In San Diego? he gave me the block. And so we had the block, we had the heads, went up building an engine. Oh. Uh, but all this other stuff takes a lot of time to make the boxes and the grind the cams. And well, it definitely is a masterpiece. It, you know, you. it looks like a piece of art. Um, I have a high appreciation for this. I know a lot of the people who saw the first motor in Cal's vehicle have a, a high appreciation for it as well. Um, I'm anxious to get this up online so folks can see kind of close hand. Um, again, although this one's not running, but it will be running in the future. So we yeah. can we can do a follow up video and keep them abreast of what's going on and the numbers it produces. So that would be neat. So, well, thank if you. you if you want to see a, another something that's unique is the flathead. Yes. Overhead cam flathead. So we will see that here in just a second, but I'd like you to show us uh, a couple other things you've got okay. in the shop and we'll get back to it.